Today we'll be talking about the elbow and its structures. We have three major structures when it comes to bones of the upper arm. The first one is the humerus. Second one is the radius. And the third one is the ulna. Now, in anatomic position, the radius is on the lateral side and the ulna is on the medial side. When discussing soft tissue of the arm and elbow area, we have a couple major structures. First off, the bicep, located right here on the slide, is a major muscle, as we all know, of the upper arm. It is a structure commonly worked out, and the BI in bicep means it has two parts. It has a short head and a long head. In the posterior area, the tricep right here, is the back portion of the arm. The back portion of the arm has tri, meaning three parts. It has three heads of the tricep. In the lower arm, distal to the elbow, we have the wrist extensors and wrist flexors. In anatomic position, as we can see, this is the anterior area here and the posterior area, or front and back. On the anterior side, the wrist is flexed. So as we can see here, by names of these structures, they are flexors. Now on the, if they pull them backwards or posterior, they are extensors, as can be seen by a lot of the words that start with extensor, coming to the posterior aspect of the arm. Unable to be seen in this image, unfortunately, is the medial collateral and lateral collateral ligaments. These are ligaments that stabilize the elbow from going medial or lateral, and we'll show them on another slide. The carrying angle of the elbow can indicate an injury. If a person flexes their arm more than 15 degrees, as stated right here, and they protect the arm by keeping it flexed, it could indicate that the carrying angle which is the angle between the upper and lower arm, is guarding an injury. We can also see injuries due to swelling, as in the case right here with acute bursitis, which is inflammation of the bursa and the most common location to have it on the elbow. We could have joint effusion, which is swelling within the joint, and or just generalized edema, as we see in the forearm here. Scars... So if you've had surgery and you have a scar from stitches, could also indicate some type of previous medical history. Here are a few of the major landmarks you need to know. The medial epicondyle, medial supracondylar line of the humerus, the olecranon, the ulnar border, the olecranon fossa, lateral epicondyle. If there's a lateral, there's always a medial epicondyle also the lateral supracondylar line of the humerus, and the radial head. Let's discuss a few of those locations that had to be identified on the last slide. We have the humerus, obviously, right there. This is the radius, and this is the ulna. This would be the radial head. This would be the olecranon also seen right here, and within the humerus, tucked in up underneath, is a fossa, which is the location the hinge joint of the elbow comes together. And again, here's the radial head. Found right here are the epicondyles. Here's the lateral, and then the medial would be on the other side. The condylar lines, or supracondylar lines, will come up from the condyle and raise up off the humerus, both lateral, as shown in that drawing, and medial, which is on the opposite side. As we've seen on this slide, there's multiple soft tissue areas that need to be palpated. Let's look at the next couple slides to identify them. As we look right here, we can see a couple of the appropriate nerves the musculocutaneous nerve, 
as it dives in right about here into a very deep area, the median nerve, which comes down the arm right down the medial line. We have the ulnar nerve right here, also known as the funny bone, but as we know, it's not a bone. And then the radial, which is right on the lateral side, that comes down to the thumb. Some of the muscles that can be seen here cut away. The biceps brachii right here. Bicep meaning both. We have the short head and the long head coming up. Here would be the end of the muscle. The muscle would be in between if the fibers were still attached. They were dissected. If we look at the other image to the right, here's a good picture of the bicep with both heads, short head and long head going up, and the tendon attachment. Here is also our ulnar nerve, the medial epicondyle, and the olecranons, lecranon bursa, which is that sac of fluid that will swell up when inflamed. Also mentioned in previous slides were some of the small muscles of the forearm and wrist. We have the pronator teres right here, which actually helps rotate the hand, or pronate, from palm surface forward facing to palm surface posterior facing. We have the flexor carpi radialis, flexor meaning the muscle flexes the carpals, and we have the, it's closest to the radius, so they call it the radialis. We have the palmaris longus, which flexes the palm forward. And we also have the flexor carpi ulnaris, another muscle that flexes uh, the carpals of the wrist. And it's on the, on the ulnar side, so the medial side of the arm. Anything saying digitorum means it flexes or extends fingers. In this case, the flexor digitorum superficialis is the most superficial muscle that goes to the fingers and allows you to flex your fingers. Some of the wrist extensor muscles, the brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis, longus, and brevis. Longus just means the muscle is longer. Brevis means shorter. And we also have a, a very important location called the cubital fossa, which we'll note the bicep tendon runs through, the brachial artery, we'll see a couple of the nerves come through also. As can be seen right here, the wrist extensors, we have the brachioradialis right here. We have the extensor carpi, radialis longus and brevis, up in this area. And we have uh, a couple other muscles, the extensor digitorum minimi, which means it uh, is very tiny the extensor carpi ulnaris, um, all extensor muscles. So they bring the wrist or fingers into extension or posterior. Now, something extremely important to understand is the cubital fossa. The cubital fossa is a very important location. If we look right here, this dotted triangular area would indicate the cubital fossa. The importance of the cubital fossa is the structures that fall within it. We have the bicipital tendon, or tendons of the bicep brachii, as can be seen here, the brachial artery, the median nerve. This is extremely important because of all the importance of those structures. If we sever the artery, we could lose the arm. If the nerve is damaged, we have no movement of the arm below the elbow. If the bicep tendon is damaged, we're going to have no flexion of the arm. So it's very important to note how pivotal the structure is. If we look to the right up here, we can see in that cubital fossa area how big the artery and nerve is and how large the tendon is. That tells you how significant it is and if there's damage to the area, we're going to have a problem. Now let's talk range of motion. Uh, we know there are three different types, active, passive, and resistive. Active is you moving it. Passive is somebody else moving it for you or something. Resistive is putting pressure or weight against the motion that you do.
flexion is motion of your forearm where you bring the hand closer to the shoulder by bending your elbow. So if we think about it, if your arm is slightly flexed like this and your hand being here, it is the motion of bringing it this direction towards your shoulder. And it is primarily created, the motion that is, by biceps brachii and the brachioradialis muscles. In contrast to flexion, extension is the opposite motion. You're increasing the angle. So if your arm is like this, hand being here, arm being down, that's the elbow, this is the shoulder up here, it is the motion of the forearm downwards. So it increases the angle. That is done by the triceps. Supination and pronation are quite unique. If you think about holding a bowl of soup in your hand, the steam going up to the sky, that's called supination when your palm is facing forward. Now, the biceps and the supinator muscles actually keep it in that position. If you were to twist your hand over so you could pour out the soup, you're doing pronation, which goes through the pronator teres and pronator, pronator quadratus muscles. A few special tests for the elbow are very similar to the same special test we learned when dealing with the knee, the valgus and varus stress test. The difference is the structures that we're testing, and we'll demonstrate that in video and or in class right now. Tenel sign will indicate if a nerve, like the ulnar nerve, is inflamed or damaged. We will also demonstrate how you identify tennis elbow. The following four types of taping and or bracing procedures will be demonstrated on our YouTube site. As we prepare to finish this section, please have any questions you might have prepared to be asked in class. Thank you and good luck.